You are not my husband. Sis, stop entertaining that man. He is not your husband. Comfortable in me, heavy on me. Focused on God and who I'm trying to be. Just living my life. I'm doing it right. Comfortable in me. This video is for my single girls. Listen up. That man is not your husband. Stop entertaining him. Period. My name is Vanessa Elaine. If you are new here, welcome. I help women become the best version of themselves through building their relationship with Jesus Christ. And if that's something you're interested in, do not forget to subscribe. Okay, so let's get into it. Listen up. This, I'm not gonna be with y'all long. This ain't gonna be a long video, but this is gonna be a straight to the point video. Right now, it is now 12.41 a.m. That's how serious I had to get this message out. Like I was, I, I couldn't go to sleep without telling you this is. I could not go to sleep without telling you this. I'm serious. So listen up, sit down. If you stand and sit down, call up your girls, tell them to tune in. Listen, we gotta talk. Let me give y'all a quick background story before we get into the gifs of the video, before I start giving y'all wisdom. So, so lately God has been really dealing with me when it comes to preparation. Like that's one of my prayers is God prepare me because I know I'm ready for marriage. So my prayers is not, oh, send my husband. It's prepare me for the man of God that you have for me. Prepare me for the things that I'm praying for. Prepare me, God. And whatever block, whatever is keeping my husband from finding me, I denounce it by force and by fire. Those are how my prayers have been sounding lately, okay? So, the Holy Spirit kind of, I know this did not come from my own thoughts. So, I'm going to say this is the Holy Spirit speaking. Um, just one day, I just had this feeling of stop entertaining men who are not your husband that you know. For a fact, it's not to say that these men are not quality men or they don't have great attributes, but they are not the man that God has called me to be in union with, in, in covenant with. And sometimes we can keep stragglers, um, rebounds. I don't know what other word I can kind of label these relationships as, like situationships. You know that this relationship is not going to blossom into marriage because there are certain things that are not in alignment with who God has called you to be and what you actually want in a marriage and in a union. But that is not enough for you to fully walk away from this situationship. And although you may not talk to this person on the phone every day, this person still has access to you, meaning they can call you up. You may even go out on a date with this person or you may even accept gifts from this person. So it's clearly a kind of situation that is forming that where feelings are involved. Your feelings may not be too involved because then again, you have those walls up, but you leave the door open on this relationship because a few reasons. Some of us, it may be because of boredom, loneliness, and it's just something to do when there's nothing to do. Or it's like, well, if years go by and that man that I'm praying for doesn't show up, you can be runner up. Some of us have that mindset where we think, okay, well, yeah, we're waiting on God, but we still got our plan B right there. Just in case God don't come through, just in case um, I don't get everything I'm praying for, I can, I can double back on this person. So there's many reasons why we keep the door cracked on certain people um, for them to uh, still have access to us. But let me tell you what the Holy Spirit was giving me. Holding on to these meaningless relationships are blocking our husbands from finding us. You know why? Because regardless of how serious you think this relationship, situationship is, you have no control over feelings being involved feelings will be catched the more time you entertain and bonds are being formed you have no control over that whether it's on your end or the other person and you don't want to be the person that hurts somebody when you know you don't really want them in that way let's be real do unto others as you would want them to do unto you so let me get into the story time i'm putting y'all all in my business right now but i don't care I gotta share it. I just have to tell my girls. So the Holy Spirit really been um, tugging on me to send out messages like with certain people 
Because, like, I'm like, oh, no, these relationships don't mean anything. These people are good people, especially with business. I can always ask them for advice. And I don't see the need to, like, cut off communication because I know this is not what I want. But the person hasn't let go of the idea of us being together in their mind. And that is the problem. That whether or not I feel like I friend zone this person, this person still has hopes that they may potentially get a relationship out of me. Or whatever the case may be. Whatever their intentions is. Whatever it is. They think they still have hope. And and that is very deceiving. And I don't live a life like that. So I don't want to be the red flag. The Holy Spirit was definitely dealing with me on closing those doors and not just blocking the person without letting them know what it is because that's just childish. We're all grown. But letting the person know like, you are not my husband. Clear as day, like, you are not my husband. The Holy Spirit has been really putting on my heart to go about and doing these things, right? Like sending out that message or making that phone call. And I just haven't gotten around to it. But let me tell you, the day that it was on my mind, right? I get a call from the person. I was like, oh, perfect. I can just get into the conversation right now. Because it was on my mind waking up that morning. And you happened to call me that morning. Wow, look at God on time. So I pick up the phone and the person answers like, oh, you miss me? What? Miss what? What is there to miss? You can't be serious. But anyway, so I'm like, you are not my husband. <laughs> I said, yeah, you are not my husband. When I tell you that person, like, what do you mean? That person got so upset. I was like, you know, we don't want the same things. And I, although I did say these things to that person before, I did not fully close the door. I did not say that. I don't no longer want to continue whatever this is, this talking because I don't want to lead you on. I never was adamant about closing the door. Although I was saying like, hey, we are not in alignment. Like you don't want the things that I want. Like I don't think, I don't really think you want marriage because you never say it. You never talk about it because you've been married before. So that's like an afterthought. Like if you come around to it, that's not your intentions. That's not what you're wanting at this very moment. And I desire marriage. I'm not wanting to be in these long-term relationships. I'm not in the waiting game. I'm not going to be waiting in two three years to be married no so I know that's not what I want for me and another thing it was just like the waiting for marriage I know that this person did not respect that regardless of nothing ever happened between us but when I would bring it up in conversation I'm like yeah I'm I'm waiting for marriage like so if you were to take me out on a trip on a trip out of the country you know we would have to get separate rooms like I would get rebuttals for that like what and I'm like well who I am on social media is the same person I am in person off of social media on social media I am the same person so basically I already knew like yeah this is never gonna work and I would tell the person that but like I said I never closed the door so as we're on the phone I literally wrote down everything this person said to me and I want to show y'all how important it is to close the door on these meaningless relationships on these situationships to the man that is not your husband that you know certain things you don't even have to pray to God about because after going through mess after going through failed relationships you should have a level of discernment and awareness of things that you no longer want to entertain things that you no longer want to be in or that you no longer want to accept so certain things you don't have to ask god about it should be clear as day you trying to wait on god to hear an answer and god probably not going to even answer you because it's just like you ain't learned this from the last thing you went through do i have to t take you through this test one more time do you really have to get your, your feelings hurt again by the same type of person this person has the same character as the last person that hurt you and you still want to test the waters so it's just like mm, are we really growing are we really moving forward once you know what you want you can't settle for anything outside of that unless God tells you like oh no this person is for you you gotta know what you want I told this person I was like you're not my husband and this person got really upset like the first thing that came out this person's mouth was I don't understand well I'm trying to make you my girl and I'm like I've been someone's girl before I had enough of that Everything that I was saying, the person had a rebuttal for and they were not trying to understand what I was putting down. Like basically, I just said, you're not my husband. We're not in alignment. We don't believe in the same things. And quickly that person turned and made it all about me. And I'm a dictator that I'm giving him an ultimatum. I'm like, I'm literally not giving you an ultimatum. An ultimatum is saying, well, if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. I clearly said that we're not in alignment. You are not my husband. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want to build anything with you because I know that we're not in alignment and this relationship is not going to go anywhere. So this is the end. And it just wasn't clicking because he continued to say this. 
I've dated, listen, I've dated a woman like you. I've been through this before. And I was like, what does that mean? You know, you gotta ask those questions because I wanna be very clear how you're moving. When I'm closing the door, when I'm setting up those boundaries, how you respond, because it reveals someone's character. It revealed his character and what I already knew all along. What I already discerned all along, he revealed it right then and there. So I'm like, oh, what, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? Well, you know, it, it never really ends good with those kind of women, with that type of woman, woman like you. It doesn't go good, meaning I'm gonna be single forever. Be very mindful of the men you choose to entertain. Do not cast your pearls to swines, woman of God. Do not cast your pearls to swines. I quickly, after that conversation, went into the bathroom because I was in a public place, went into the bathroom and I started to pray. And literally, I was just like, after the phone, I really didn't even care about the conversation. I was like, yeah, good. He got so upset and so flustered. I was like, well, okay, bye. And when I went to use the restroom, it dawned on me what he said. Like, I was like, I have to denounce that. I'm not gonna allow someone to put word curses on me. I quickly went into prayer and denounced everything that he was putting down, just in case. Because one thing about me, I do not play with words. Words, Because I know words have power. And especially if you throwing those words at me, you directing those words towards me, I'm not playing about me. So I definitely went into prayer and denounced everything he said and started to, to decreeing things that I wanted to see come to pass in my life. Things that were contrary to what he was saying. Things that were in alignment with what God has for me and what I believe God has in store for me in this year. In this year. And I pray the same for all of you ladies. But like I said, do not cast your pearls to swine. Be very mindful and pay very close attention to the fruits of the spirit that this person has. If this person does not have the fruits of the spirit, red flag. It's not to say that this person is going to be perfect, that this person is not going to be flawed. Everybody has flaws. But you have to understand and have discernment, pray for discernment to know, how is this person going to treat me after? How is this person going to treat me? Is this person going to go before God when we have an issue? Is God going to be the center and the foundation of our relationship? Or is God going to be a forethought? You got to think about these things. You cannot want the relationship more than you want a relationship with God. God. That person cannot want you more than they want God because then it becomes like ownership. And when I was on the phone with a guy, he was like, I, I see you like to be a dictatorship, man. You think you know everything. And I'm just like, you see all those things he was, he was throwing at me. So basically that just revealed to me that I was just an assignment for you. That it was the chase that kept you coming back. I'm just telling you, it was just the chase that kept coming back because I literally did not show interest in this person. So I was kind of wondering, like, I know he kind of knows our friend zone him but why does he keep trying i know like what it's not like he's an ugly guy that he doesn't have things going on for himself but i'm like I, I, but i know i'm that girl though but it's just like hmm but what that quickly showed me is once he would have got what he thought he wanted whatever his true intentions was with me once he would have got that it would have been over i would have saw his real true colors it would have been a one 80 that I would have regretted even coming into contact with this person. Sometimes you don't need to go that far with someone to know that it just will not go well. It will not end well. That you are not for me. That I don't even have to touch the stove to know that it's hot. That I can look from afar and know that, oh yeah, I'm not touching that. Danger, danger, danger. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I would rather be lonely than to entertain the wrong man. Okay? Because that is a dangerous game to play. It will set you back so so far and those emotional ties is nothing to play with so what the holy spirit was telling me is to cancel out any stragglers because we cannot hold on to people we have to free people from our lives we have to remove any blockage any emotional baggage any emotional connections that we have with men who are not our kingdom spouse because how can your kingdom spouse find you if your emotions are entangled with someone else there's like a veil over you you're seeing single in the natural but spiritually you're tied to someone else because you sat there and entertained this person and now you're you have formed a soul tie and understand that soul ties can be formed not only through sexual intercourse but it can also be formed emotionally like by by an emotional bond so be, be very mindful of what you entertain and i'm telling you woman of god if you desire marriage close the door on 
every situation ship every straggler every man that calls your phone that has access to your number send that text out i don't even care if they ain't call you in a month but if you know they call you out the blue sometimes and this is the thing those kind of men they will call you right on the brinks of you doing something excellent for god or when god has you somewhere when your kingdom spouse is just about to find you that person calls you ring 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 and this person is familiar and you're comfortable with this person so it's easy for you to be distracted we can't afford to be distracted woman of god so send that text out sis Sorry, I can no longer entertain you. You are not my husband. Make sure you make it clear. The reason why I feel like the Holy Spirit wanted me to say that you are not my husband is because when someone knows that you desire marriage, they will try to play on that. And they'll try to send like empty promises to you and try to have you hold on to the little promises of, oh yeah, the little hope that they're throwing at you. And it's just like, no, it's manipulation. So you want to call out that spirit and to know that you have discernment and you know that you are not my husband. You call them out on it. That I know that you are a counterfeit. That you are not the real thing and I'm not falling for it. And I'm moving forward because my kingdom spouse is on his way. I am a wife in preparation. And I'm believing that God has more for me. And you just ain't it. Sorry, you may be it for somebody else, but not for me, baby. Not for me. Sorry, I'm closing the door. Please do not contact me. Have a great life. Toodles. Sign off, sis. And that's it. Period. If you got to block them on Instagram because they want to send a DM after. If you got to block them on your phone because you know they're going to not respect what you just text. And that's an extra red flag. A big, bright red flag if they don't respect what you just sent out. They don't respect your words. They don't respect that you said you don't want to entertain them anymore. They know that you don't trust you. That you go against your word every single time. That's why they're going to move like that with you. But it's time for you to stand up for yourself. You're no longer going to entertain someone that does not value you, someone that is not going to marry you, someone that does not honor God and who God has called you to be, someone who is a destiny killer, someone who is not designed to be a part of your purpose in life. We're letting it go, waiting with patience with God to know that God has not forgotten about us that is on its way but prepare us Lord I hope this video spoke to someone I don't care if it's just for one person it's just for you sis that God wanted me to release this word just for you because he knows that you are a wife and that your kingdom spouse is on the way but he has some things that he wants to do in you before he gives you your kingdom spouse before your kingdom spouse finds you that he wants to do a new work in you that is some things that he wants to heal you from it's some things that he wants you to to accomplish before even meeting him but he had to get the distractions out the way so you can focus on you and focus on him to focus on the things of god we don't have time we don't have time to play with our destiny we do not have time to play do not allow your loneliness to keep you in a place of desperation in a place of lack in a place where your identity will never flourish where your identity will be trampled. Because being in a relationship with a man who will not marry you will only leave you empty. Especially when you desire marriage and you're walking with God. And to know that you are worthy of so much more. I love you ladies. Until next time. Bye. Send the text out though. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with at least five of your single girlfriends. Let them know. Send out that text. Don't leave this video without sending that text. Or even after this video, send out that text. I don't care to how many people you need to send out that text to. Send out that text. Don't be scared. They can't, they can't whoop you. Because you know you got a father that's going to back you up. So don't be scared. We're not scared. You can't be scared. You got to be scared of staying stuck. You got to be scared of never receiving and living the life that God has ordained for you to live. A blessed life. A favorable life. A life of abundance. Let me just put this side note in. A man can have money so you can get the things, the, the material things, and your life looks blessed. But there's a part of you that will be empty 
because understanding that covenant is so important and God honors covenant. So God honors marriage. And and when you're with your kingdom spouse, it's certain things in you that will begin to manifest, that, that will begin to flourish when you come into covenant with that person. That your your marriage is a ministry. So being with someone that you know is not going to marry you and he just has the money to supply the material, the lifestyle for the looks and the glamour and the luxuries. But you'll be dying spiritually. You won't even reach purpose. It's not worth it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? It's not worth it. You are a wife. It'll cost you more to hold on to something that is not for you than to put it down.